Hey, good morning. This is Seth with SethPiller.com. Hope you're doing good. I'm going to make a little video here for you on a new topic. I have an email from somebody and it says this. Uh, I had a quick question since it appears you're no longer here in Boulder. No, I'm in Santa Monica now. I need an executive skills coach or an executive function coach for my child who's resistant to any help but starting to realize that she needs it as she's about to start high school. So any recommendations would be appreciated. Keep up the good work. So how do we do this? So what I did is I, I made some notes here to give you some ideas of this question. So one thing is, is that I do get a lot of emails about this. I get a lot of people from all over asking me, like, do you know an executive function coach in, um, in Alaska or in Florida or and they get, usually will give me like a specific city and I get such interesting emails from all over places that I have no idea where anybody is so I've answered this question a lot because I'll email them back and I'll say well here's what I would do to look and there are some key concepts so I wrote down some key concepts in terms of how you can find an ADHD coach or an executive function coach in your area so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to address the resistant child syndrome, okay? Um, all kids who come to me are resistant. So I want to talk about why they're resistant. Um, so there are four main reasons that I have why kids are resistant to getting this sort of help. Um, first thing, um, before I even tell you one of these reasons, is that I can't help a kid who's totally resistant to help. It's just a waste of time. And if your child is there with somebody that they're working with, it's a waste of your time, it's a waste of your energy, it's a waste of your money. Obviously, you want to help your child, but how are you going to get them to receive the help if they're resistant? So first of all, if they're completely resistant, you're, it's not going to work. So you have to find somebody who um, they will work with, or you have to get the door cracked just that much and i'll explain a little bit about how to do that so um now what happens with me is i get a lot of parents who will contact me and they'll say we want to go ahead and work with you or we want to explore working with you um we want to set up the meet and greet so what i do as a coach is i do something called a 30 minute meet and greet usually it lasts 45 minutes to an hour but it's basically a time when i get to meet the family so i get to meet the parents and the child and the child gets to know me personally. And when the parent says, well, what if my kid won't even come to the meet and greet? Here's what I always say. So also, if you're a coach or a therapist or a tutor watching this, feel free to steal this idea because it's really important that the child feel emotionally safe to come meet me. So what I do when the parent says, well, what my kid doesn't even want to meet you, what I say is, look, tell them that it's five minutes, literally five minutes. If after five minutes, after they meet me, they, do, they hate me, tell them they can go. And I mean that when I say that to parents, like if they really don't resonate with me, fine. But they need to feel, the, the child needs to feel like there's an escape. They need to feel emotionally safe. They don't know me. They don't know a tutor. They don't know a therapist. They don't know a doctor. They don't know a psychiatrist. This is scary when they're told, when the child feels like, something is wrong with me and I'm going to this person to be fixed and I'm broken. Like that's not the case, but that's often how the child will feel. So they need to feel emotionally safe that they can escape the situation. So you as the parent need to say, look, let's just meet them, whoever the, whoever the person you're looking at is. Let's just meet this person for five minutes. If you don't like them, I promise you we will leave. But you as the parent have to actually leave if it's not resonating. Um, and you'll be able to tell right away, like if it's resonating or not. So I do a meet and greet, which allows, so first of all, the resistance comes because they don't want to commit to something that feels bad to them. So um, another reason, and that that is another of the reasons why they are resistant is because they have had a lot of bad associations. So they have had associations with um, tutors, therapists, um, pull out programs, school programs, things where they felt bad about who they are, about that they can't fit in the box, um, that they're supposed to change who they are, they are, that they can't do it well enough, that they can't do it fast enough. So they've had, they have these associations and they have an association in their head that they're different. They don't want to be pulled out of class. They don't want to look different to their friends in front of their friends. They, 
uh, don't want to look different by being the dumb kid or the kid that goes to the tutor. And they're not, but they, they don't, they're all they're focused on is they don't want to feel different. They, they don't want to feel like they stand out, like something's wrong with them. Okay. So, um, and then the next one is the next reason that they're resistant is because often it's abstract to them. So when I do the meet and greet, what that allows me to do is look at a kid and say, here's how it works. Here's what we would do. Here, here's exactly how many days, here's how many hours, here's what it would feel like. Meanwhile, they get to know what it's going to feel like because they're interacting with me. And, and I do not make my kids feel stressed. I really work on focusing on their strengths and what's going right with them and, and what I see. And then I give them a lot of ownership and say, how do you want to improve? What are your goals? So that ownership helps a lot. So with the resistance, I, um, uh, there are four key points to the resistance. If they are resistant to getting help, one, I can't help someone who's 100% resistant. Two, the meet and greet really helps. And telling them that just giving, just give it five minutes and see how it feels. Three, they have a lot of bad associations with how they feel bad about themselves or how they feel different with the experiences that they've had. So they're applying, they're projecting those experiences onto whoever you're trying to get them to work with. And next, that it's abstract. They don't know what help means. So they need concrete. They need to know what help means. And that's, again, where a meet and greet can help. But if the person who you're seeing doesn't do a meet and greet, you can look at their site and figure out more concrete ways in terms of how they work or you can do a call with them to find out next how do you pick a coach so I have a few different ways to how you pick a coach three main ways who are you gonna ask to find a coach locally how are you gonna search for a coach if you're searching on Google and how do you interview a coach so these are all about how do you pick a coach so if you're looking for a coach um, who are you going to ask? One, there are people called educational consultants, and they will help you. Often they'll help find treatment centers, boarding schools, but they can also help you to find local coaches. They're often very connected. Their fingers on the pulse of what's going on in your area. Two, uh, Facebook groups in your area um, that have to do with education or there are a lot of massive like ADHD um, groups. So a lot of times you can find executive function coaches through an ADHD group and an autism group. And you can, even if it's not in your area, you can find Facebook groups that are, that can help, help you uh, get directed to the place you're trying to go. Three, ask your friends, ask people that you know, who, you know, because you might find, um, you might find a real gem just through asking friends who's not called an executive function coach or whatever you're specifically looking for. So ask your friends. Three, ask your doctor. Four, ask um, uh, therapists, local therapists or therapists that you know or therapists that you're seeing um, or psychiatrists or psychologists, but also neuropsychs. Neuropsychs in particular do a really wide range of testing. So they do a lot of testing and then they refer people out. So you might get a neuropsych test for your child. Those are um, those can cost two to three thousand dollars for thorough extensive testing if that's needed. Um, but neuropsychs uh, are very connected with coaches in your area and they refer out a lot. So those are who you're going to ask if you're trying to pick a coach. Next, how are you going to search for a coach? online well you're going to search for um you can search for executive function coach although there aren't a lot you can search for um an educational therapist they may be good for what your child's going through you can search for an add coach or you can search for an adhd coach so do both google searches adhd coach in your city and add coach in your city um, you can search for tutors now there are some people um, who are tutors who are exceptional with organizational and study skill stuff. So um, I have one in um, Colorado, Jenna B, and she's not called, she doesn't call herself a tutor or an SAT coach or really anything, but she is an incredibly gifted and talented person when working with these kids. So I refer to her a lot and parents don't even necessarily know what to call her because she doesn't have a title like that, but she's amazing. So don't worry too much about the title, but back to what you're going to search for, um, search for the word tutors in your area. And you can also search for an online coach. So some kids, I do Skype coaching with some of my students. Um, now that comes back to the resistance question. If a kid is really resistant, online is not good. Um, but if they're, the door is open, then you can find an online coach. Now, there's one that I know of that somebody recently mentioned to me. Her name is Gretchen Wagner, 
and I think she's the anti-boring coach is what she calls herself. I don't know her, so I'm not referring her, but I looked at her site recently, and I think she's doing some cool stuff. So somebody like her, you can check her out. Gretchen, hi. I don't know if you're watching this, but um, shout out to Gretchen, whoever that is, because she's doing some interesting stuff, and she does a lot of online stuff. So that can be a good one for you. Okay, that is how do you search to find the person, more or less Google search. So first I talked about picking a coach, um, who to ask, and, now, and then how to search. And next, how do you interview a coach, okay? Um, so basically what I do is a meet and greet, and I wish more coaches, doctors, therapists would do a meet and greet because it really allow, there's no commitment, they can just get to know you. So I do a free meet and greet, um, but basically you wanna interview them to see if it's a match, okay? Number one most important thing, number one, when your child is working with someone is to see if there's rapport. If the person who your child is working with knows how to develop good rapport with your child and your child feels like they're having a good relationship with them, like they feel good around them, like they joke around together and stuff like that, that's number one to me. Because if your child trusts the person and has fun with the person and feels good about themselves with the coach that you're going to set them up with, then that coach can help them soar, okay? If your child is resistant because they don't resonate with that person, I'm gonna tell you most likely, unless the person can build that relationship, most likely it's gonna be a waste of your time, energy, and money. So number one, when you interview someone is see if there's rapport with your kid. You want your kid to meet them. Don't just do the interview yourself. You want your kid to get on the phone or get on Skype with them or in person with a meet and greet, which I think is the best way because it's in person, um, but you wanna see if there's rapport there. Um, you also want to make sure that the coach that you're working with is very honest. So for example, if I'm working with a family and it's not working, I will tell them, or if the, it's not resonating with the kid, I will tell them, don't use me, go to such and such. I refer out like crazy. I am not the person for everybody and I don't want to be. I want to work with people who I really resonate with for myself too. Like I like to work with people who I resonate with. I don't like to work with kids who I don't resonate with. So you want a coach who's going to be honest with you and who's going to tell you, I'm not the person for you. Okay. If that's the case. And that's, and that's not just about getting more clients, but a coach that's about getting you the help you need. So you want to look for that when you interview a coach, you want to get that vibe from them that they're not just about the money that they're about helping you first and foremost. Um, and you want someone who offers what you need. Now I do a very robust offering of services. So I do school visits, RTI, 504, IEP meetings. I email teachers personally. I help kids e make their own advocacy emails. I help parents learn how to write advocacy emails so that they can email teachers in an effective way that's going to get the response that's, that they need in order to help their kids. I will contact school counselors, administrators. I do one-to-ones with my kids. I do groups with kids. I do parent sessions. I do parent coaching. So I do, I charge by the semester and I do a very, so basically I say, give me this much money for the semester and I'll take care of anything and everything that possibly comes up. Now that's how I work. Now, whoever you work with, you just want to make sure that they're going to cover the bases that you need. If you have a freak out on a Saturday morning and you really need to talk to that coach and get some tips on your child and you know that that happens sometimes, you want a coach who has that kind of flexibility that they can get back with you in a reasonable amount of time. Some coaches are 50 minutes once a week. To me, that absolutely doesn't work. I, I text my kids, I call my kids, I email my kids, I'm in contact with them. Some of them need tons of um uh, support like that. Some don't. The idea is that they're going to need less and less and less and less support. But when you go to somebody who just has a very fixed time and it's very rigid, that doesn't work for a lot of outside the box kids. But if they feel like they offer what you need, trust that. So um, to find a good coach, interview them, just make sure that they are meeting the needs. And I guess the things, again, that I would be seeing is do they do one-on-one? -on -one? Do they do group? My group is very powerful. The kids feel like they're a part of something and they don't feel like outcasts in this group because everybody is struggling in the group and it's fun. So do they do one-on-one? -one? Do they do group? Do they do home visits? I do home visits, which I think are very important because I have to see where they're studying and make sure that that environment is conducive to them being able to focus. Um, are they doing home visits? Are they doing um, in-school visits when you need it? Are they available when you're having times when you really need to contact them and need help? Um, so just see about those things. Um, so some of the things not to do 
when you're finding a coach is do not believe that any system will work. Just because the coach says, I do the XYZ system, this is my, this is my thing and here's how it works. If your gut doesn't resonate with that system, you better trust your gut so that goes. So number one is don't just believe any system works just because it's a pretty fancy system wrapped up in a nice package. You should be skeptical. Two, listen to your gut. If your gut feeling says, I'm not sure about this person, don't hire them. Three, professionalism. Um, don't look for us. Like, this is what I'm wearing today. When I'm working with my kids, like, I try to look cool so that I can relate to the kids. Now, that's me. I'm not saying that people who dress in suits and dress really, quote, professionally aren't going to help your kid. But don't pick them because of that. Ultimately, you want someone who can build that rapport with your child. So and if it, you walk into an office and it looks really pretty and really sterile and really perfect, imagine how your child's going to feel. It feels very clinical. Um, my office has skateboards and games and um, posters and rock and roll and stuff that I want. I want my kids to feel comfortable in my space. Again, I'm not saying that the other type is wrong, but beware. Don't, don't just look on the surface, really look beyond that. So if you find a coach and they look like they're ADD and they're, how are they going to help your kid, but they relate to your kid and they can help your kid move forward. That's all you care about. You do not need to worry about how it looks on the outside. Okay. Um, don't judge a book by its cover. So really look for again, uh, again, that rapport. And then, um, next don't get someone that your kid hates. So if you think they're amazing, but your kid doesn't like them, don't do it. It's not going to work. Um, next is the cost. Cost is very weird in this whole industry. So, and, and you got to look, do they charge by hour? Do they charge by uh, semester? Do they charge by a program that's a month long or whatever? Um, it's don't, don't judge it too much by the cost. What you want to do is you want to walk out of there saying to yourself, is this going to help my child's future? And that's what the cost is really covering. If you believe that it's going to help, then it doesn't matter how much it costs. If you don't believe it's going to help, then don't pay for it. But the costs are going to be weird. People pay costs in different ways. Um, so you, you don't, and the person who you're working with has put a lot of intention behind designing their costs and they're trying to cover their costs for their business and make a living and help you. So um, don't get too skeptical about it. You can definitely question them on it. And I, you, you want to be clear on what does it include. Um, and you don't really want to be upsold or feel like anything weird's going on. But um, you want to come out of there feeling like, okay, I believe I'm going to pay this much money and this should help my kid get a better life. And if that's the case, then whatever it costs, pay it. Because it will also save you money in the future because you won't be doing as many tutors and you won't be doing blah, blah, blah. It'll save you emotions, all kinds of things. So if the person resonates, then it's good. Now, I want to come back and I want to review the two biggest tips from this whole, I don't even know how long I've been talking, uh, 18 minutes on how to pick a coach, okay? Two best tips. Number one, if that person can build rapport with your child, that's the most important thing in the world. If they can build rapport with your child and push your child past their comfort zone, so what I try to do is push my child, my kids past their comfort zone, but not past their threshold. So they will not grow if I can't push them past their comfort zone, just like when you're working out, you have to get past your comfort zone. But if you push it past the threshold when you're working out too much, you're not going to be able to work out at all for the next several days. So there's a fine balance there, but you want someone who can build rapport with your child and who can push them uh, beyond their comfort zone, but not past their threshold. That's one of the two most important tips. And the second most important tip I think this whole thing is if your child is resistant, tell them, cool, you can be resistant as you want. Just give them five minutes. Okay. Just give the person five minutes. That's all I ask. If you hate them, we'll leave. I promise. And then you got to keep that promise. All right. I hope you have an awesome day.